पूर्णमद पूर्णमिद पूर्ण पूर्णमुद्यत पूर्ण से पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओ शांति 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 श्रुतिस्मृतिपुराण आलय करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शंकर लोकशंकर शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बागरायण सूत्र भाष्य वंदे भगवत पुनः पुनः ईश्वर गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्याप्तेहाय दक्षिणामूर्त नम गुकार सन्वर्तक अंधकार निरोधि गुरुत्यभीयत सदा शिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यम अस्मदाचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा शंकरानंद गुरुपादाबुजन्मने सविलास महामोह हैरण्य गर्भा प्राणात्म वादिनूचिरे चक्षुराजक्षलोपे प्राणसत्वे तो जीवते प्राणो जागर्ति सुप्ते प्राणश्रैख्यादिक्रुत कौश प्राणमय सम्यक विस्तरेण प्रपंचित मन आत्मे मे उपासन पराजन प्राण से भोक्ता स्पष्ट भोक्तृत्व मनस मन एव मनुष्याण कारण बंध मोक्ष मनोमय कौश तेनात्मेती मन The discussion that's going on here pertains to the different opinions that people have about the nature of Atma. There are those materialists who believe that this body itself is Atma because this is what we experience. We have the aham bhava in the body, even the direct experience that I am a man, I am a woman, I am tall, I am short, I am fat, I am lean. All the experiences show that I am the body. <coughs> and the body is a conscious entity atma is a conscious being body also is conscious and therefore body is atma this is the opinion of the charvakas the materialists and they always find some statement from the upanishad to support opinion tasmat na savaye sapurusham narasamaya so taitri upanishad says at one point in time 
In fact, the first step of leading to the nature of Atma in the inquiry, that Taitri Upanishad says that this body is Atma. So, they just take that sentence out of context and quote that in support of their theory, in support of their view. Well, there are others who refute their view and say that no, gross body cannot be Atma because when there is something other than the gross body, there is something within the gross body which keeps the body alive. When, which, which when departs, the body dies. As long as which factor was there in the body, so long body was alive. And when that leaves this body, then the body dies. That shows that body is not the Atma, there is something else because of which the body is alive. And therefore, gross body cannot be Atma. Then what is Atma according to you? They say, well, the sense organs are Atma. The eyes, ears, the, all the organs of perception, the organs of action, they are Atma. Why do you say that? Because you have experience. What is our experience? I am talking, I see, I hear, I am walking, I am doing, and so on and so forth. This also is our experience. And when I say that I see, or I hear, or I walk, or I talk, that shows that it is the sense organs with which I am identified. And therefore, that experience reveals that the sense organs are Atma. But we say that the sense organs are inert. How can they be Atma? He says, who says the sense organs are inert? They are also conscious entities. Where did you get that? This is what we find in the Upanishad. So, several Upanishads report a somewhat a dialogue between the different sense organs. Not only a dialogue, but a kalaha, in fact a quarrel among the sense organs, where each one claims its supremacy. And these dialogues show that the sense organs must be conscious entities, because inert things can never have a dialogue or they never can quarrel amongst each other, amongst one another, and therefore the sense organs are also conscious entities, and therefore Atma is conscious entity being, and so sense organs are also Atma. <coughs> this is, this is how they justify the European, the sense organs are Atma. Well, what actually is there is, when these dialogues are reported in the Upanishad, it is not really to mean that the sense organs are conscious beings, it is really to establish the supremacy of prana for the purpose of meditation. Because prana hai, jest hai, shrestha hai. So one who meditates upon jest and shrestha, the eldest as well as the, the most exalted, he also becomes jest and shrestha. That's the idea. To prove the prana to be the supreme in this whole upadi is the purpose of the dialogue. And then also if you think that there was really a dialogue among the sense organs. It was a dialogue among the presiding deities of sense organs. So there is a discussion in Brahma Sutra as to how do we understand these passages from Shruti. And then the conclusion is that by these sense organs, namely eyes, ears, etc., we should understand the presiding deities. And they are conscious entities. And thus there was a, a dialogue or a quarrel among them. Like we see a story in Keno Upanishad where in uh, this Agni and Vayu and Indra, all these devakas go to the yaksha and to show that they are supreme, but then there is someone else. So, so even, uh, it is not the sense organs, but these presiding deities who are conscious entities. And even if you say that the sense organs are atma, then how many atmas are there? Is a whole group of sense organs become one atma, or each one of them is a separate atma? If the whole group of them is atma, then if one of them is away, then if one of them is not there, then Atma should die. But then you continue to remain alive even when one of them, like eyes or ears, stop functioning. That shows that their group cannot be Atma, nor each one of them can be Atma, because there can be so many Atmas in one place. So that Paksha also is refuted. And there are others who say that, no, no, it is Prana, this vital energy that is Atma. <coughs> Why do you say that? Because when everyone is sleeping, then also the prana is awake. In the deep sleep, the mind is sleeping, sense organs are sleeping, all the faculties are asleep. At that time, who is the one that is awake and protecting this body? Prana is awake. And that shows that it is prana because of which the life is and therefore he is atma. <coughs> then there are people who say, no, no, prana cannot be atma. Why cannot be atma? Because Atma or I should be bhokta or enjoyer. It is also my experience that I am the experiencer of pleasure and pain. 
आई एम भोक्ता और एक्सपीरियंसर वेल प्राणा के नॉट बी एक्सपीरियंसर बिकॉज प्राणा इज जड़ा एंड एफर ही के नॉट बी एक्सपीरियंसर एंड एफर दैट इज प्राणा और द वाइटल एनर्जी टू बी आत्मा दिस इज दैट माइंड अलो इज आत्मा तो मन आत्मे के मनते उपासन पराजना दोस्त पीपल हु आर कमेडेड टू उपासन ऑन मेडिटेशन दे से दैट माइंड इज आत्मा बिकॉज द भोक्तृत्व ऑफ एंजॉयरशिप बिलोंग्स टू द माइंड आत्मा इज एंजॉयर एंड एफर माइंड इज आत्मा वे डू फाइंड सपोर्ट फ्रॉम दिस ओपिनियन ऑफ योर देन दे कोड स्टेटमेंट मन एव मनुष्याण कारण बंध मोक्ष हो लुक आई थिंक अमृत बिंदु उपनिषद वन ऑफ दोज उपनिषद से मन एव मनुष्याण कारण बंध मोक्ष हो दैट माइंड अलोन इज द कॉज ऑफ द बाउंडेज एंड लिबरेशन इट इज आत्मा हु इज बाउंड एंड आत्मा हु इज लिबरेटेड एंड दैट शुड से दैट माइंड अलोन इज द कॉज ऑफ बाउंडेज एंड लिबरेशन एंड दैट फॉर माइंड इज आत्मा एंड ऑफकोर्स चैत्र उपनिषद से तस्माद्वाय तस्माद प्राणमया अन्योंतर आत्मा मनोमय है दैट इज कम्पेयर टू प्राणमय दैट इज अनदर वन एंड थ्री टू प्राणमय हु इज आत्मा एंड दैट इज मनोमय है सो अकॉर्डिंग टू चैत्र उपनिषद ऑल्सो दिस माइंड इज आत्मा दस दिस इज हाउ दी इंक्वायरी प्रोसीड आई डोंट नो वेदर दे रियली सेव दिस ऑन बिटवीन यू एंड मी बट देन वी प्रेजेंट दम इन दिस मैनर so all these different contenders are there and their opinions are all placed here in a certain format in order to show a certain thought development so this is how then we understand why the body the sense organs the prana the mind and so far we came that the uh, the opinion is that the mind is atman now we continue further from the verse 69 <coughs> वेद से मनस अभी आंतर से विज्ञान से आत्मत्वादन बौद्धस्त मत दर्शयी अदर पीपल हु से नो द माइंड इज नॉट आत्मा देर इज समथिंग दैट इज इवन सुपीरियर टू द माइंड देर इज समथिंग सटलर देन द माइंड देर इज समथिंग इंटीरियर एज कंपेयर टू द माइंड देर इज समथिंग दैट इवन कंट्रोल द माइंड सो दैट विच कंट्रोल दैट विच इज सटलर that is superior that is is inferior that should be atma <coughs> and so compared to the mind this vijnana or the buddhi is superior and that's why that buddhi must be atma <coughs> manasah api antarasya vijnanasya atmatvavadina hai bauddhasya this is buddha so buddha are those who are khanik vijnani hai so those people who say that atma is in nature of Think of it as momentary consciousness, and where do you get this idea? Because buddhi is constantly changing, and they take buddhi as the atma. They have prana manendra. What they have, they have. Buddhinte, buddhinte, sunyam vidhu ya. चलाम बुद्धि के शून्य विदु चलाम बुद्धि मीन बुद्धि इज इज कॉन्स्टेंटली चेंजिंग और 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 मोमेंट टू मोमेंट चेंजिंग दैट मोमेंट्री कॉन्शियस सो बुद्धि इज कंसिडर्ड बी आत्मा बाय दिखने के विज्ञान में हम अंडरस्टैंड दिस इज हाउ वी डिजेंड देन हियर बाय इफ यू गो टू क्षणिक विज्ञान इन ही मे नॉट नेसेसरली एडमिट वॉट ही से अबाउट हिम बट एन फॉर ओवर अंडरस्टैंडिंग वी कैटेगराइज दम इन दिस मैनर it may be pretty simply over simplification of to present their views however it it is very convenient for us to look at the various opinions in this manner and ultimately arrive at what the upanishad has to say <coughs> so the verse 69 says here <coughs> विज्ञानमात्मे पर आहु क्षणिकवादि यज्ञानमूल मनसो गम्य स्फुट विज्ञानम आत्मा परे आहु 
क्षणिकवादिन है परमी के अदर्श क्षणिकवादिन है तो उसके अदर वादिन है मीन्स कंसेंडर एंड क्षणिकवादिन है दो से दैट आत्मा इज क्षणिक है और मोमेंट रहे दिस इज दैट विज्ञान आत्मा बुद्धि इज आत्मा बुद्धि विज्ञान से आंतरत्व युक्ति है हाउ डू से दिस बुद्धि और इंटेलिजेंस इज आत्मा इंटेलेक्ट इज आत्मा हाउ तो सेकेंड लाइन ऑफ वर्स इज रीजन वाई दे थिंग दैट इज बुद्धि ऑफ इंटेलेक्ट दट इज आत्मा यत है विज्ञान मूलत्व मन सह गम्य के स्फुटम यू मिस टू दट बुद्धि इज सेटलर इन द माइंड बुद्धि इज सुपीरियर द माइंड बुद्धि इज कंट्रोल ऑफ द माइंड इफ यू कैन प्रूव दैट देन यस इट गेट एस्टैब्लिश बुद्धि इज आत्मा ऑफ द माइंड एंड फॉर बुद्धि शुड बी आत्मा एंड नॉट द माइंड एंड फॉर दे गिव हियर अ रीजन यत है बिकॉज विज्ञान मूलत्व मनस है मूलत्व कारणत्व विज्ञान कारणत्व मनस है दट मन है माइंड है इस कारणम और कॉज इन विज्ञान मीन विज्ञान और बुद्धि द कॉज ऑफ द माइंड गम्य के स्फुटम दिस कैन बी वेरी क्लियरली सीन इट कैन बी वेरी क्लियरली सीन दैट द बुद्धि इज द कॉज ऑफ द माइंड And that we know very well how intellect or buddhi is nisyat nikam tah kama bhakti meaning that uh, that mode of the mind which is determining faculty. So when the mind assumes a determining mode, then it is called buddhi. So all the determinations or the ascertainment or the decision making faculty or judging judging faculty is buddhi. And what is the mind? Does? This is what we say that mind is the impulsive faculty. Occasionally, generally, it is understood as emotional faculty, but then it is not emotional faculty. It is really more emotional faculty also. It is, but it is more impulsive faculty also. So we need to respond or react rather. And all of these things are based on certain patterns that are already built into our mind. So we have certain built-in thought patterns according to which we respond or react to the different situations. And how do these thought patterns get built into that? On account of some kind of a judgment or some kind of a ascertainment which was done at some point in time, at some point in time I I judged the situation in such a manner, and the judgment was perhaps repeated again and again, and then that conclusion got settled, and that developed into a, a thought pattern, and so all these different patterns which do not involve any thinking at all, and they are automatically built in. This faculty is what we call mind. However, all these patterns are have can be traced into some kind of a conclusions in our intellect. And if the conclusion in the intellect changes in course of time, that pattern also will change. Like likes and dislikes are also patterns of thinking. The moment I come across a certain person or a situation, automatically a pattern called like or attachment immediately arises. Or when I come across someone else, a dislike arises based on the conclusions that have been made in the past. And if my conclusions is to change, that like and dislike also will change. If I discover something about the person which I did not know, I may start liking the person. And then whatever dislike I had, first may go away, and the pattern may change. So all the patterns that the mind exhibits, all of them are based on some conclusions in the intellect. Which we may have to search today, and therefore the intellect that in fact sets the train for all our responses or all the patterns which we call emotional patterns, <coughs> and therefore also the sankal to vikal for all the different doubts arise in the mind, and the doubt also gets settled when the buddhi or the intellect makes a decision. And also, as it was said earlier, later on, how the buddhi is the one that directs the mind to do various things. And that is how buddhi or intellect is in all respects inferior, controller, superior to mind, and therefore that should properly be called atma. <coughs> Now, while on the subject, one minor point, this point also is clarified here. The Tikka Karasa says, "Vijnana, Vijnana, Manasabdavacchya, 
अंतकरण से एकत्वात कथम मनोविज्ञान हो कार्य कारण भाव है कि आशंका इट इज इन फैक्ट डोंट थिंक दैट देर आर टू माइंड इन साइड देर आर टू फैकल्टीज वन फैकल्टीज कॉल माइंड एंड अनदर फैकल्टीज कॉल इंटेलेक्ट नॉट दैट यू टू फैकल्टीज इन द बिगिनिंग पीपल थिंक यू नो देर आर टू फोर थिंग्स इन साइड वन इज कॉल अहंकार वन इज कॉल चित्तम वन इज कॉल मन वन इज कॉल बुद्धि वन इज ऑन दिस साइड ऑफ हेड अदर ऑन अदर साइड ऑफ हेड एंड थिंग्स लाइक दैट इज नॉट सो इज इन वन माइंड और वन अंतकरण दैट अलोन गेन्स अ डेजिग्नेशन ऑफ बुद्धि वैन इट इज डिटर्मिनिंग दैट अलोन गेन्स अ डेजिग्नेशन ऑफ मन है वैन इट इज वैसुलेटिंग एक्सेट्रा दैट अलोन गेन्स अ डेजिग्नेशन ऑफ चित्तम वैन इट इज रिफ्लेक्टिंग ऑफ थिंकिंग और रिमेम्बरिंग एंड दैट अलोन गेन्स अ डेजिग्नेशन ऑफ अहंकार वैन इट इज असर्टिंग सो देर इज ओनली वन फैकल्टी अंतकरण इज वन अलोन सिर्फ अंतकरण से एकत्वात वॉट यू कॉल माइंड एंड वॉट यू कॉल बुद्धि बोथ ऑफ दर वन अंतकरण अलोन कथम मनोविज्ञान हो कार्य कारण भाव है देन मन एंड विज्ञान बोथ ऑफ दैम बींग वन अंतकरण अलोन हाउ कैन दर बी कार्य कारण भाव हाउ कैन वन मन है ऑल्सो इज अंतकरण एंड विज्ञान ऑल्सो इज अंतकरण हाउ कैन वन अंतकरण बी इज इफेक्ट एज वेल एज कॉज यू नो सो वन बींग कैन नॉट बी इफेक्ट एंड कॉज साइमल्टेनियसली एंड देव हाउ डू से दैट द विज्ञान एंड द मन आर रिलेटेड एज कारण एंड कार्य आशंका तम उपाद तयो भेद तवत् दर्शयति तम मीन्स कार्य कारण भाव उपाद इन ऑर्डर टू शो दैट कार्य कारण भाव इज सैनेबल इज रीजनेबल तयो भेद तवत् दर्शयति टू बिगिन विथ तयो बुद्धिमनसो भेद तवत् दर्शयति फर्स्ट सी ऑफर शोज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन वॉट यू कॉल बुद्धि एंड मन What is the nature of buddhi and what is the nature of mana? That is first shown in verse seventeen. Aham rutiridam rutihi ityanta karanam dhirha vijnanam syadham rutihi. इदम वृत्मनो भवेद इसे इस अंतकरण द्विधा वॉट यू कॉल अंतकरण अवर्ड इन इंग्लिश इज कॉल माइंड इस द्विधा इज इन फैक्ट टू फोल्ड अहम वृत्ति ही इदम वृत्ति ही नो डाउट इट इज कॉल अंतकरण इट इज द इनर ऑर्गन so it is inner organ with reference to the organs of perception and organs of action which are outer organ but it is karanam karanam means a tool or an implement you know that's called karanam just as for a wood cutter when it's splitting wood he has an axe in his hand and with the help of the axe he splits wood then axe is called karanam an implement with the help of which he accomplishes a certain karyam he accomplishes a certain action and so this wood cutter is called karta he is very agent of action of splitting the wood that acts is the karanam meaning the implement which he employs in order to accomplish that action and the wood is called karma the object upon which the action is done <coughs> and definitely the agent is always controller of the implement meaning is the wood cutter who controls that x he employs the x as he requires or as he likes and that where he should be considered to be superior to that x so the karta is always superior to karanam because as if it is swatantra hai karta that karta of agent always is swatantra hai swatantra when i have control over my self i am called swatantra hai and so the karta of agent always is independent and karanam always is subservient to the karta meaning it always serves the purpose of karta <coughs> so even though the antakarana of the mind is one still it performs two specific kinds of functions one is aham vrittihi other is idam vrittihi so vritte astvaham vritti masidaha vritteyo mano vidyaham manah that one has a manasandukim 
Margane Krite. When you really make an inquiry as to what's the nature of this mind, he makes inquiry. Vritte Svaham Vritti Mastitaha. Idam Vritte Ha. So there are two kinds of Vrittis or thoughts in our mind. One is called Idam Vritte Ha, meaning thoughts pertaining to objects. Idam. Another is Aham Vritti, thoughts pertaining to Aham or the subject. So there is a whole set of thoughts which have their objects, which has its object in the outer world. And there is another set of thoughts called Aham Vritti or the eye thought which has its object in the eye or the subject. <coughs> and that's what is said here, Aham Vrittihi, Idam Vrittihi. In our mind, these two kinds of thoughts are there. One is Aham thought, I thought, other is this thought. <coughs> of which, Vijnanam syat Aham Vrittihi, Idam Vrittir Mano Bhavet. Of this, the Aham Vritti is called Vijnanam. <coughs> So buddhi is aham, ahankara is there in the buddhi. And idam vritti, idam means the, the, this thought, or what is called karanam, that is the mind. So in the antahkarana of the mind also, we have these two faculties, one is called karta, and that is the buddhi. That is karanam, meaning instrument, that is called manaha. So manaha is karanam, and buddhi is karta. <coughs> So, even though mind is one, it in fact consists of these two aspects. One is called idam vritti, other is the aham vritti. Idam vritti is like karanam, like an instrument or a tool or an implement, and aham vritti is like the karta, the agent. <coughs> okay. Then says tayoho kari karana bhavamaha. All right. Suppose the mind has these two kinds of thoughts. So what? He says, well, they are related as cause and effect. How? That's being said in verse 71. <coughs> Aham pratye bijatvam idam vritte ritis phutam aviditva swamatmanam Bhāsyam vetyana tukvachita Aham pratye vijatvam idam vritte he it is sudam Sudam again it is very clear that idam vritte he aham pratye vijatvam So idam vritte he aham pratye vijatvam meaning idam vritte he aham pratye vija so these are the cause of the idam vrittis in aham pratyaya. Meaning aham pratyaya, the I thought is the cause of this thought. So subject thought is the cause of the object thought. It is sudam, it is very clear. Tadev upapadevi, how is it clear? How do you say that the aham thought or the I thought is the cause of this thought or idam thought? How do you say that? Second line says, aviditva samatmanam Bhāsyam vekti natu kvachita. Kvachita, in no place, Bhāsyam vekti, never do you see anything outward, anything that is outside. Aviditva from ātmānam. Swam ātmānam aviditva. Swam means the self. Ātmānam is myself. So unless I first of all know myself, Bhāsyam natu kvachita vekti. It is never possible for me to know anything that is out there. It is not possible for me to know any object. It is not possible to, for me to have even thought or thought of an object unless first there is a thought of the subject. So unless I am there, no knowledge can take place. No activity can ever take place unless I am there. So even when I say that I am Sukhi, I must be there and then that happiness is there. Aham Dukhi, even there also, I must be there. The sukham, dukham, all of these happiness and happiness, these are all idam vritya hai. All of these are objective thoughts. But then, that sukham, dukham, etc. can be there only when there is someone who knows them. And therefore, for example, in the deep sleep, when the aham vritya also is not there, there is no activity, no transaction, no idam vritya also. So in the deep sleep, when Ahamvritti is not there, Idamvritti is not there. 
In the waking and dream state, aham vritti is there, idam vritti is there. Therefore, we say by Anwar Gatereka, we say that the idam vritti depends upon aham vritti. <coughs> and therefore, sum atmanam aviditva. Even in, first of all, unless I shine, I am there, that individual is there, there is no way that there can be any knowledge or any cognition of objects outside. Bhāsyam vetti nitukvachita. Sridhi tīkākāra aham vṛtti udaya abhāve, idam vṛtti anudayāt anayoho kārikāna bhāvaha ikyasaha. Aham vṛtti udaya abhāve. In absence of the arising of aham vṛtti or the eye thought, idam vṛtti anudayāt, it is not possible that the idam vṛtti or this thought can ever arise. And therefore, anayoho kārikāna bhāvaha. Of this, aham vṛtti and idam vṛtti, or vijñāna and manam, manaha, there is kārya kāna the cause and effect relationship. <coughs> and this is what we find, as we say, in deep sleep, in deep sleep, when aham vṛtti is not there, when ahankara also is completely merged in ignorance. So in deep sleep, aham vṛtti also is not there. At that time, there is no idam vṛtti either. <coughs> and also when we wake up, what is it that the first arises, you know? When you wake up, the first thing that arises, first of all there arises a general consciousness. Before I wake up, there is what we call unmanifest or objecta. And when I wake up, there is first a general awareness, not even awareness of I, just awareness as such, general awareness. And then there is the awareness of I, that I am there. Then you look around, where am I? Sometimes what happens is when you go out of town, when you go into these different spiritual camps and we, some place we are there, traveling in Himalayas and some funny places you are there and sleeping where, you have no idea at all. In some corner somewhere you might be lying down there and all of a sudden you wake up you don't know where you are. It takes a little while for you to orient yourself. And I say, hey, wait a minute, I am here. Hello, I am in the camp. What's the time? Five, five thirty. I am supposed to be there in the meditation and then I jump, you know. And then you finish off all your things and then ultimately go and sit there at the end, whatever it is. But then it takes a while before all these things we become aware of. So that process is very similar to the process of creation. That's how the Sankhyas describe the creation process. The first that arises is what they call Mahatattva. Mahatattva means the total intellect. And then arises Ahankaraha, is the sense of individuality. Then arises all these sense organs, mind and so on and so forth, and therefore what occurs first is called cause and what comes later is called effect. And therefore also we say that aham vritti is karanam, idam vritti is karyam. Karanam or cause is always superior to the effect, subtler than the effect, inferior with reference to effect, and independent with reference to effect, and therefore it is buddhi or the vijnanam that should properly be called atma and not manaha. <coughs> So these verses show that it is intellect which is Atma and not the mind. Okay, then you have to establish that this intellect is momentary. Then you arrive at the Kshanika Vijnana Vadaha. So Tasya Vijnana Sya Kshanika Tve Anubhavam Pramanayati. You know to establish Kshanika Tvam or momentariness of this intellect Anubhavam Pramanayati. Anubhavam Pramanayati. He presents anubhavam or our direct experience itself as pramanam. So, itself is shown as the proof that this vijnanam or intellect is momentary. Says <coughs> in verse 72. Kshane kshane janmana sau. Aham vritter matau yataha. Vijnanam kshanikam tena. Svaprakasam svato mite. Yataha kshane kshane aham vritte janmana sau matau. Yataha sins, kshane kshane, every moment, aham vritte of the eye thought, 
जन्मना सौ मतौ और मितौ अंदर रीडिंग इज मितौ ज्ञातौ यू नो वेरी वेल दट एवरी मोमेंट अहंकार चेंजेस इट इज ट्रू दट एवरी मोमेंट द आई थॉट इफ साउंड चेंजिंग एवरी मोमेंट द नोशन दट आई एंटरटेन अबाउट माई सेल्फ इफ साउंड चेंजिंग दिस मोमेंट आई एम हैप्पी अदर मोमेंट आई एम अनहैप्पी दिस मोमेंट आई एम फादर नेक्स्ट मोमेंट आई एम सन दिस मोमेंट आई एम स्पीकर नेक्स्ट मोमेंट आई एम लिस्नर एंड सो एंड सो फोर्थ so moment to moment that aham vritti or i thought it keeps on changing and therefore this is something that is directly known to everybody and therefore no pramanam is needed you don't require shruti in order to prove something that you know directly and so it's a matter of our direct experience that aham vritti or the i thought changes moment to moment keeps on changing so the i thought is born and i thought is gone and the i thought is born i thought is gone and so that i keeps on changing every moment <coughs> because the aham also changes sympathetically with reference to idam as idam or the object changes the aham also changes because of my identification with the object it's not that i have to change but moment is sukha vritti or a thought of happiness arises immediately i find myself to be sukhi or happy If a dukkha vritti, dukkha vritti or unhappy thought arises, I find myself unhappy. So happy, unhappy, pleasant, sad, and so on and so forth. Constantly, this I and I thought keeps on changing, and therefore it is so. Jin mana so there is birth and death constantly of this vritti. Shane shane every moment, and therefore we say that yada ha. So this is the case. Yada ha vidyanam shane kam te na. Then, vijnanam chanikam. Therefore, we say that vijnanam or the intellect is chanikam. Chanikam means momentary, because it's a matter of our experience. A holy experience. How did you arrive at this knowledge that vijnanam is chanikam? That buddhi is momentary. How did you arrive at that? He says, "So says Tika Gara. Chanikatum upadya, so prakashatum upadayati." From the experience he has he has taught us or shown how the intellect or the eye thought is constantly changing. That is a matter of experience. So having established that by and the way on the strength of our experience, now he also establishes that this vijnana or buddhi is so prakasa, meaning it is self-effulgent. All the buddhas always expect except what we call swasamvedyatvam or the self-knowingness. They say that Atma knows itself, and so Atma or Buddhi, as they call Atma, it has a very unique characteristic that it knows itself, and therefore you do not require another awareness in order to illumine Atma. Atma knows itself as Kshanika. So how do you know that the Buddhi is Kshanika? Because in Buddhi, which is Atma, there is Swasamvedyatvam, there is the self-knowingness. That itself, we don't accept that. We say that I cannot know myself because I cannot be simultaneously knower and known. Because I will be this karma and karma, the subject-object duality, which cannot exist in one. However, they accept it. They say that I can know myself, and so there is so some way that from in atma. So buddhi or vijnana is atma, and vijnana is so some way that from self knowingness, and therefore. I know that I am Shanika. <coughs> so it says, "So prakasham swato mitehe, swatah mitehe. Mitehe means so jnanat or swenayva paramitatva vityarsha. So I know myself. Since this buddhi is self-revealing or buddhi is self-knowing, therefore I know myself as Shanika or momentary. So I do not require any other agency in order to know that." And so he says, "So prakasham, so to mitehe." Since I know myself to be Kshanika, therefore this Vijnana is so prakasham, meaning it is self-evident, self-revealing, or self-knowing. <coughs> well, the footnote number one gives us that anumanam, prakasha idam anumanam, Vijnana so prakasham bhavitumarhati prama vishetva deti. He says Vijnana meaning this Buddhi. So, prakasham bhavitam arhati. This buddhi must be self-effulgent or self-knowing. 
Why? Prama Vishatva. Because it is known. So I know the buddhi, I know the ahankara as constantly changing. And since it is known, therefore it is an object of knowledge. And since it is known, then there is nothing other than that. Therefore it is self-revealing also. And therefore this vijnanam is self-revealing and therefore it is known to be kshanikam. <coughs> Now, they also have to present for our satisfaction some statements in the Upanishad from the Shruti to show that even your Upanishads also say this. It's very interesting that in India, this Christian priest, they go around and teach Ishavastya Upanishad as though it is a Christian uh, scripture, you know, Ishavastyam, you know. So Isha means Christ. So Christ in, in India is called, so Jesus Christ is called Ishu Christa. So this is called Ishu. Ishu means Isha. And Ishavasya Upanishad is Ishavasya Milam Sarvam. So Ishu is this Isha. And therefore the Ishavasya Upanishad is, is actually Upanishad pertaining to Christ. And somehow then they will do whatever is necessary. But, so anyway, you must show then how people will accept it. In India people will accept something, they say the Veda said it, then people will accept it. Because Veda Vakti is always Pramanam, is ultimate authority. And so everybody has to show, everybody will manage to show some kind of a statement from somewhere. Here also says, Vijnanasi Agama, Vijnanasi Atmatve Agama Pramanityaha. How do you say that Vijnanam or this Buddha is Atma? Where did you find that? Agama Pramanam. Agama means Aptavakyam. So the Vakya or this, the statement of the wise, Apta means one who knows. So statement of the knowledgeable person is called Aptavakyam, that is called Agamam. So Vedas are also part of Agamam. Agamam therefore is that by the parampara or by this, uh, by the whole tradition, the teaching that comes down to us from the teacher to the student, that whole parampara is called Agamam. And so Kenopanishad also quotes such a thing. So, Anya Devata Dhizat, Atho Avijitat Adhi, this is Agamam. He says, Na Vidmaha, Na Vijani Maha, Yathaitat Anushishyat. We do not know how else can Atma be instructed about. So we don't know how else to give instruction about Atma other than what we have said that Atma is a year of the year and the mind is mind, etc. Then students say, anyhow you have to teach me. Anyhow you have to reveal Atma to me. He says, okay. Then Agam is a Pramanam. Anya Devata Dhiritat Atho Avritat Adhi. So this is, the, this is how we have learned from our teachers so this jnana parampara, so this teaching that is handed down from this teacher to the student also becomes agamam. It is shushrama purvesham, enastad which is akshire. This is what we have heard from our purvesham, from the earlier acharyas who expounded this truth in this manner. Anya devata dvigatat atho avidat adhi. And that is called agamam. And so anyway, Upanishad also, all Vedas also is part of Agamam because there also is the same teaching tradition. So Agamam Pramanam Kyaha. And here he quotes again in the Upanishad in order to show how this buddhi or vijnana is Atma. Says in the verse 73. <coughs> Jiva ityagama jagu Sarva samsara etasya Janmanasa sukhadika Janmanasa I am Vijnanamaya Kosha hai Jiva hai di agamaha jagu Agamaha, the scriptures, all the traditions say that I am Vijnanamaya Kosha hai, Jeeva hai, or Vijnanamaya Kosha hai, I am Jeeva hai. This Jeeva is Vijnanamaya Kosha hai. So the Vijnanamaya means the Buddhi is Jeeva hai, is the samsari, is the individual soul, that is what the scriptures say. <coughs> Which are the scriptures? The Tikagara says, Tasmadva etasmad manomayat 
अन्योतर आत्मा विज्ञान में है दिस इज वॉट पैतृ उपनिषद सेज एट एस कंपेर्ड इवन दिस मनोमय कोश है द मेंटल शीट दट इज वॉट वी कॉल द इंटेलेक्चुअल शीट और द शीट ऑफ द इंटेलेक्ट एंड दस इंटेलेक्ट इज प्रेजेंटेड दर एज द सेल्फ ऑफ द माइंड विज्ञान यज्ञ तनुदे कर्माणि तनुदे विच ऑल्सो पैतृय सेज विज्ञान यज्ञ तनुदे Who is the one who performs the yajna? Karmani tanute bicha, and who is the one who performs all these other other chores and other activities? Vijnanam, it is a buddhi which is where the ahankara is there. That's why the kartrutva, the self of doership, is there. Sense of doership. So kartrutva, the sense of doership, is in buddhi, and that's the one that performs all the vaidik karma. इत्यादि वाक्य विज्ञान से आत्मत्व प्रतिपादक वाक्य आत्मत्व प्रतिपादक विज्ञान इज आत्मा एंड दट वॉट दी स्टेटमेंट इन फैक्ट शो दैर ओके एंड ऑल्सो सर्व संसार एक जन्मना से सुखाधिक है जन्मना से सुखाधिक सर्व संसार एक जीव से विज्ञानमय से The samsara, consisting of janma, nasha, the birth, death, and so on and so forth, the whole chain of birth and death, and all the pain and suffering that is associated with it, belongs to him, belongs to the ham, belongs to the jiva, and also happiness and happiness, whatever it is, all the various experiences that we have, and this whole sense of limitation that goes with it, all of that samsara, meaning the next saram is samsara. And that's constantly moving from one experience to another, from one birth to another one. This whole limited existence belongs is for whom? Vijnana Maya. It all belongs to this Vijnana Maya. As Vedanta Sara would say, and this is the Jyotiha uh, Sarva Jyotiha Ravoha. Or I think, uh, yeah, uh, in the Vedic uh, Swami also says that this is the fellow Jiva, this Karta or Ahamkara, is in fact the one. Who sustains all the Jyotiha? In the lower, the upper lower, the Jami, who goes to the lower? This fellow goes to the heaven or whatever it is, and comes back to this world again, performs karma, again goes to different worlds, gains experiences, and again comes back. And so he is the Jiva, he is Samsari, and that's how they say that the Jnana or the Intellect is Atma, it is a self. <coughs> So far we are only watching the whole debate. The interesting thing is, this is called Pratham Mallam Nyaya. All this, all our initial rounds of elimination are going on. First fellow who came there was Charvaka. He was eliminated by another Charvaka who says, no, body is not the Atma, sense organ is Atma. That fellow was eliminated by other fellow who says, no, the prana is Atma. He was eliminated by eight other fellow who says, no, mind is Atma. That fellow was eliminated by another one who says, Vijnanam or Buddhi is Atma. He is going to eliminate the other one. He will say, "Sunya is Atma." Then we will tackle that fellow. So if you tackle the Prasanna Mala, the heavyweight champion, then you know automatically tackle the rest of them. And so, both Avan Darshana say, "Sunya is not Matam Darshani." So both Dhas have four schools, but two primary schools. One is this Madhyamika, and this is the Sunya Avans are called Madhyamika. <coughs> And the Sanita Vijnana is one, and the Shunyavadana is the other one. And so, Avantar Bhedasya, the another, another, another variety of this Bauddha is called Shunyavadana, and the Shunyavadi, Sasya Matam Dasyati, next verse shows the Matam or the opinion of the, or the position of the Shunyavadi, who is another school of Buddhism. <coughs> The verse seventy-four says, "Vijnanam chhanikam naatma, vidyadhrani ne shavat, anyasya anupalabdhatva, sunyam madhini ka jaguhu." म 
Madhunika. So this other school of Buddhism, they say, Vijnanam, Sanikam Vijnanam, na Atma. This Sanika Vijnanam or constantly changing momentary awareness, which is what we call Buddhi, that cannot be Atma. Why? Because it is momentary. If it is momentary, it cannot be Atma. Why? Well, they quote different examples. Vidya Dabdha Nimeshavat. There are so many momentary or momentary changing things that we find this in our experience. Vidya is what? The lightning. Lightning is momentary. Abhra, Abhra means cloud. Cloud also is momentary. As much as moment to moment the cloud changes. So moment to moment the cloud keeps on changing. It's shape and things like that. Nimesha, what a... Nimesha means the opening and closing of the eyes. So how the opening of the eyes or closing of the eyes is momentary? How the lightning is momentary? How the cloud also is momentary? And Nimeshavat, all these are not Atma. Will you say that lightning is Atma? It says no. Is opening and closing of eyes that is Atma? No. Is the cloud Atma? No. Now these are not Atma, but still they are all momentary. Then we say that the, elect, uh, the, the uh, lightning is not Atma, and lightning is momentary, and therefore, whatever is momentary is not Atma. So you have to look at the inference here. But we know that lightning is not Atma. Fine. What is the characteristic of lightning? It is momentary. So lightning is momentary, and lightning is not the self, and therefore, whatever is momentary is not the self. The opening or the closing of the eye is momentary, you know? And is that Atma? No. And therefore, what is momentary is not Atma. And so also Buddha is momentary. Since momentariness or Hitu is there, therefore, it is not Atma. So by the illustration of Vidyut, Abhra and Nimesha, the lightning, the cloud and the, uh, the batting of the eye, by that we show that what is, whatever is momentary cannot be Atma. Where Vijnanam also is momentary and therefore it cannot be Atma. <coughs> Nimeshavat vidyut chaka chakyavat, footnote number two. Chaka chakya means luster. So vidyut chaka chakya means the luster, the brilliance of the lightning. How there is momentary, it comes and goes away. So what comes and goes away in a moment cannot be atma. And therefore they said, shanikam vijnanam na atma. This momentary aware consciousness or momentary intellect cannot be atma. <coughs> then what is atma? You please tell us. He says, Anyasya Anupalabhyatva. Now, Upalabhya means perception. And so the final thing that can be perceived or known by us is buddhi. Beyond that, nothing is perceptible. Anyasya Anupalabhyatva. Beyond buddhi, we don't see anything at all. When buddhi is not functioning, well, nothing at all is visible or nothing is perceptible. And other. Shunyam Atma iti Madhyamikaha Jaguhu. So this Madhyamika say that the Shunyam is the Atma because then Buddhi is not Atma. And Buddhi is the final thing that you perceive. And other than Buddhi you don't perceive anything else. And therefore that nothing is Atma. Or sometimes they say that if you say that the Buddhi is momentary, then it arises and again dies, arises and dies, and then also you would admit that the two moments are distinct from each other, otherwise they will, it will not be called momentary. So there is no connection between the first moment and the second moment. And so they will ask this question, okay, what is there between the two moments? The first moment has gone, the second moment has not yet arisen, and what is there between the two moments? It's nothingness, shunyam. So that you also you may say that atma is shunyam. Or as here it is said, other than buddhi, we don't perceive anything at all. And Buddha is not Atma and therefore Sunyam meaning the void is Atma. Non-existence is Atma. So we interpret the Sunyam to be non-existence. They may not like it, by the way. They may have something else to say. But then if they, these are the possible positions of our Atma. If they come out and say that our Sunyam is no, no, it is really not void. It is something positive existence and so on and so forth. We will find that Shunyam means Sat. Then you nothing to bother contend with you. Then you are saying something like what we are saying. Or, well, you are saying something which can be dismissed in a different way if it doesn't exactly 
agree with what we are saying. But in case anybody had, there are all different possible opinions possible, different potential opinions possible about Atma. And so, the Shunyam is, this is what Madhimika, anyway they use the word Shunyam. Except that, they may want to say that, what we mean by Shunyam is not just a void, it's something. It is something that is Bhavarupam, it is something that is existence. If it is existent, well then it cannot be Shunyam, then it has to be some positive entity. But if you say Shunyam or Asat or non-existence, then, well anyway, this is the opinion of nihilists as they are called. Nihilists means they believe that there is no, I mean, there is no uh, substantiality or no truth at all in this creation. Everything ultimately oblivion, you know. Everything ultimately resolves into oblivion. It comes from oblivion and goes into oblivion. Oblivion is what? Nothingness. And so they say that nothingness is, and you'll be surprised. We think that it is a funny opinion whether any number of people will believe this. Even without studying Buddhism, there are many people who think that there is nothingness is the truth of the life. Kuch hai ni jagat mein. What is there in life? There is nothing, you know. And so life is all, all void. And all nothing, there is nothing at all. No truth. Because of the disappointments in whatever it is. Somehow the life may be such that they find no mm, the meaning in life. So life is meaningless, is without any substance, without any truth. And so they think that oblivion and nothingness is the truth of life. Anyway, now again, Tatra Sruti Maha, in order to support this opinion that Atma is non-existent, again they quote a Sruti. Asadeveda <coughs> Nityadav Iraneva Shrutam Jnana Jnayatmakam Sarvam Jagad Bhante Prakalpitam Asadeva Ida Nityadav Ida Neva Shritam Tat Shritam Ida Neva Shritam Ida Neva means what? Atmanaha Shunyatam Shritam Shrutya Pratipadam, even Shruti also says that Atma is Shunya. Where is it say? In what kind of statement? Asadeva Midam. Asadeva Midam means what? As the footnote number three says, Tad Dheke Ahuhu, Asadeva Midam Agrasit, it is Shruti Vakyaro, it is Bhavaha. Sunday the Upanishad presents this particular Vakya as a Puru Paksha. But anyway, such a Vakya does appear there. The teacher there says, Sadeva Somi Idamagrasi, Ekameva Dityam, Sadhake Ahu, Adami Asadeva Idamagrasi, Ekameva Dityam. Then, Uddhalaka says Shweta Ketu. Hey Shweta Ketu, the whole creation was set or existence or truth before its, the whole universe was set before its creation. But that the Eke Ahu, the Rasam say that the whole universe was non-existence or void before its creation. And Katham Somi Asad Jayata, in fact he asked the question, how is it ever possible that something can come out of nothing? If the whole universe was nothing before its creation, how can something come out of nothing? In this manner, this whole idea of Shunyavada is refuted in Chandogya Upanishad. But you can take one little statement, Taddheke Ahuhu Asadayava Idamagra Asit Ekameva Dvityamiti. They are even called one without a sudden. Non-existence, one without a second. What can be one and second at a time non-existence? Sankaravara takes the statements and, and, and thrashes it out. But then, uh, or of course, Taitri Upanishad also says, Asadva idamagra asit, tatovai sadhajayata. Idam agre asad asit. The whole universe was asad before the creation, tatovai sad ajayata. And from the asad, the Sat was born. So Taitriya says. And that's a better statement. So Asadva Yudha Magdara Asit. Why does he uh, footnote quote that particular statement? Because Asadevedam, that's the word that in the, in the sloka, and that Asadevedam, that's the exact uh, expression that appears in the statement in Chandogya, that's what it is quoted. But perhaps they would find that other statement better. 
असद्वा इदम ग्राफी तथो वही सद जायता इदम मीन्स दिस होल यूनिवर्स वॉज असद आसीत इट वॉज नॉन एग्जिस्टेंट बिफोर तथो वही सद जायता एंड फ्रॉम दैट दिस सेट मीन्स एग्जिस्टेंस वॉज बॉन्ड सो दिस एग्जिस्टेंट क्रिएशन हैज कम फ्रॉम नॉन एग्जिस्टेंस एंड देर फॉर दे आर नॉट कंसर्न अबाउट दैट सेकेंड पार्ट दे आर ओनली कंसर्न अबाउट असद्वा इदम ग्राफी दिस होल यूनिवर्स वॉज Non existent before creation. So, even in the Sutam, this is what we find in the Suti also. Suti also says that, and whatever was before is supposed to be the content, the, the cause. So, what is before is called cause, and what comes later is called effect. And so, so then, Sandhya says, Sadeva Sami Idama Grasi, the whole universe was set before the creation, meaning set or Brahman is the cause, and in the world is effect. That's the idea there. And so, what that from that is caused, the effect came out. And so, so the Shruti says, Asat was there before the creation, Asat is the cause, and Sat is the effect. <coughs> and therefore we say that, that cause is the truth of the effect. The clay is the truth of the part. And therefore, similarly, Sat also becomes the truth of the whole universe. If Asat was the cause, Asat becomes the truth of the whole universe. And therefore, Asat is the truth. So, Shruti also says that, The truth of the whole universe is asat or shunyam or nothingness. <coughs> so the Tita, shunya se tadrupatve prathiyamana se jagadha kaagate hi. Shunya se tadrupatve, fourth footnote, atma su atma vipatve. If you say that shunya is atma or atma is shunya or the world or nothing, prathiyamana se jagadha kaagate hi. How do you explain this jagad of the creation? Which is pratiyamanam perceptible. So we perceive this whole tangible creation. If you say that the whole universe was non-tangible, non-existent before creation, then how did this tangible creation come to being? Because something tangible cannot come out from nothing. It is never our experience that something comes out of nothing. Can you ever say the Sankraja or I will ask this question? If something can come out of nothing, then from the horn of my head I should really build a house, you know? Because you don't require something in order to create something. So if nothing, something can come out of nothing, then you can create anything because nothing is plenty. And then you can create whatever you want, and that's not the case. And that shows that you always require something for creation of something. And so how this bhava rupam jagat, or this existent creation, how did it come about from non-existence or from shunya? These are questions. शून्य से आत्मरूपत्व इफ शून्य इज आत्मा और आत्मा इज शून्य प्रतियमान से जगत है कागति हाउ यू एक्सप्लेन दिस टेंजिबल क्रिएशन सिंपली एक्सप्लेन हु सेज इट इज टेंजिबल हु सेज दर इज क्रिएशन वेर इज क्रिएशन वे डोन से इट इज अ टेंजिबल क्रिएशन एट ऑल भाव रूपम जगत भाव रूप मीन सम काइंड ऑफ पॉजिटिव एग्जिस्टेंस विज नो इज नो भाव रूपम यू ऑल्सो अगे विच यू दैट Bhava or the, or the, the create, I mean, bhava means existence cannot come out from non-existence. So we also agree, except that we have to say that there is nothing that exists. So they, in fact, attack you like this. That who says that there is creation at all? We say that there is no tangible creation, whatever. What you consider as tangible creation is, in fact, nothing but a kalpana or a projection of the mind. All that is is. Sanit Vijnanam, this momentary consciousness or this momentary buddhi is all there is. And moment to moment constantly is projected this whole universe. That's all. There is no substantiality, there is no continuity. Therefore, what we call this quantum theory was already there, built in there, because they never accepted continuity at all. This Charvaka's materialist never accepted continuity. This Bhaudva's also never accepted continuity at all. And so that there is nothing continuous, it is discreteness. Khanika means what? Discreetly changing, con- discrete consciousness. And so the discreteness is, is what is accepted by them. And they say that there is nothing continuous. They also say that continuity is just an appearance, is a notion. And they give the illustration of a flame. So we think that the flame is there continuously, but moment to moment new flame is arising. Or better, Somebody may think that that screen, the movie theater, you know, in the screen, some continuity is there, 
that continuously these things are moving. In fact, it only consists of discrete frames. And so also the whole universe is discrete. There is no continuity at all. And we say that there is, it is moment to moment projected. So that's what they are called subjectivist, you know, or subjective idealist or whatever they call them. So I, the idea is that there is nothing objective in the creation at all. All there is is subject. I or Khanika Vijnanam is a subject or the self is the only reality. And moment to moment the world is projected. So what is projected also is the same self. But because of every way of non-discrimination, we divide this whole thing into subject and object. And so we brand objectivity upon the universe. There is no objectivity, there is no tangibility, there is no reality. All there is is Khanika Vijnanam constantly assuming these different patterns. Moment to moment the patterns are changing and that's all the reality there is. There is no solid reality behind it all. And therefore, Jnana Jnayatmakam Sarvam Jagat, the entire creation, Jnana Jnayatmakam gnyat, of the nature of the knowledge and the known. That's all the creation is. So creation of the nature of the knower, the knowledge and the known, all of this is what? Dhanti Kalpitam. Dhanti Kalpitam is something that is projected on account of Brahma or delusion. Meaning, it is Nisvarupam. It doesn't have any substantiality at all. Nisvarupam, it is void. Void alone appears in the form of this universe at all. It is void or shunyam that alone by Brahmati or, or on account of delusion appears as the whole universe. And therefore, we do not accept any object as different from subject. They do not accept any Vyavaharika Satta or any any tangible or even the, the objective reality at all. According to them, there is only Pratipasika Satta or subjective reality alone. And so, this is how they explain the creation of the universe. <coughs> and thus they say that Shunyam or void or nothingness is the Atma. <coughs> okay. Om Puranamada Puranamidam Puranat Puranamudachyade Puranatya Puranamadaya Puranameva Vasishyade Om Shanti 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 Shankaram Shankaracharyam Keshavam Badarayanam Sutra Bhashya Krutau Vande Bhagavanta Upunah Punah Ishvaro Guru Ratmedi Murti Bheda Vibhagine Vyoma Vatyapta Dehaya Dakshina Murtaye Namah Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namah Hari Om